Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chicken and dumplings. That's right. Not only is this American classic American and classic, it's also one of the most comforting and delicious things you'll ever eat. And the great thing about this dumpling recipe is it will work on just about any super stew. So if you can simmer it, you can make a dumpling on it. And here is how you do it. So I'm going to do basically a chicken stew, although it's much more like a soup consistency than a thick, thick stew. And we'll talk about that later. But I'm going to put a whole chicken in a Dutch oven. It's about four pounds. I'm going to throw in some mirepoix. That's fancy French for celery, carrots, onions. I just diced them up. I'm going to throw in a couple quarts of cold water. I'm going to toss in a bay leaf and a little bit of fresh thyme. We don't need any seasonings at this point. I'm going to put the heat on high and bring that up to a boil. And as soon as that starts boiling, I'm going to back the heat down to very low. I just want a very gentle simmer. At that point, we're going to cover this and cook it for one hour. After an hour, I'm going to take the chicken out, put it in a bowl to cool, because we're going to want to pick all the meat off the chicken. So set that aside. All right, and while that's cooling, we're going to go ahead and turn the heat back to high on our stock. It's going to come to a boil, and then I want you to take a ladle and skim off about two tablespoons of that chicken fat. All right, and we're going to use that to make something similar to a roux. So I'm going to take a couple tablespoons of that chicken fat. I'm going to stir in about an equal amount of flour, just to make sort of a paste consistency. When that's stirred together, I'm going to take a couple tablespoons of the hot stock and just stir that in. Just give it a stir. It's going to start to thicken up. And at that point, just dump it all into your pot and whisk it in. That little step's kind of optional, but I think it helps to prevent lumps. And by the way, don't expect that little bit of flour to really thicken this up. I'm just doing this to give it a little extra body and to introduce a little bit of that chicken fat flavor into our chicken and dumplings. Okay? So once that's been mixed in, I want you to lower the heat. And I want you to keep this at a very gentle simmer for about 15 minutes, which is going to be the perfect amount of time to pick our chicken meat off the bones. So this should be cool enough for us to handle. If it's not, just wait. All right? So I picked all the chicken off the bone, every scrap. We're going to dump that into our pot, give it a stir. And at this point, we're going to start phase one of seasoning. I'm going to add some salt, some cayenne. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Okay, put your hands down. That's not funny. And some freshly ground black pepper. All right, give it a stir. You want this to be perfectly seasoned before the dumplings go on. So make sure you taste it and check. Mine was just about perfect. So what we're going to do here is we're going to leave this on low heat. Just let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes while we make our dumpling batter which is super easy, as you're about to see. So in a bowl, I have some creme fraiche. You can use sour cream. You could use buttermilk. You could use yogurt. Pretty much any dairy works here. So I have some creme fraiche. I'm going to add some milk. I'm going to add some freshly picked thyme leaves. A couple large eggs. I'm going to whisk that together. And to the wet ingredients, we're going to add the last ingredient, self-rising flour. See, I made you buy a bag when we made cobbler. I promised we would use it up. So there you go. If you don't have self-rising flour, don't worry. On the blog, I'm going to tell you how to do it without. So we're going to add the flour. We're going to take a wooden spoon, and we're going to start stirring this. And generally, you know, I don't worry too much about overmixing. There's so many more important things to worry about, like world hunger and male pattern baldness. So I don't get too worked up over it, but this is a case where you don't want to overmix. Stir until almost all the flour disappears. If you see a little dusting of flour here and there, that's fine. You really want to stop at that point. All right, so don't overmix this. So just stir until barely combined. And right there, mine was perfect. Okay, next step, we're going to form our dumplings, which is so easy. Take two large spoons. Use one to scoop and one to push off big dollops on top of your simmering chicken mixture. All right, by the way, very important, this is simmering. You may want to crank the heat up just a hair. We don't want a rolling boil, but we do want a lively simmer. So try to get your simmering like mine is. You should get eight nicely sized dumplings. By the way, do not worry about what they look like at this point. When they steam, they're going to look awesome. Trust me. So once our dumplings are scooped over the top and we are very confident we have a nice simmer going, we're going to place the lid on and we're going to steam these for 10 to 15 minutes or until done. And once cooked, they're going to be light. They're going to be buoyant. They're going to feel real and they're going to feel spectacular. Oh yeah. Now, if you don't want to touch these, which quite frankly, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to, you can always go with the bamboo skewer method. If you stick it in, it will come out clean, which mine did. And that's it. Your chicken and dumplings are done. I garnish with some extra thyme sprigs on the seams because I'm, you know, kind of a fancy pants. But I think that looks pretty cool. You don't really need to let this rest or sit, so feel free to bring it right to the table. 
You're going to scoop one of those bad boys out, serve it with your soup or your stew or whatever you boil these on top of. Like I said, this will work with almost any mixture that you can simmer. But like I said, I prefer a soup-like mixture. Not only do the dumplings steam better, but because the dumpling is so starchy itself, I don't really need a thick gravy for this, okay? And by the way, if you're wondering what I'm garnishing with there, that's a little bit of homemade jalapeno vinegar. I'll show you how to do that, super easy. And that was just like a simple little condiment to give it a little bit of a contrast. All right, I gotta dig into this thing and you can see how beautiful and light that texture is. Nothing against my friends in Eastern Europe, but this is not one of those very dense doughy dumplings that you sometimes get. This is much lighter and biscuit-like. People throw the term comfort food around very casually. This is comfort food. This has been clinically proven to cure the blahs and certain forms of melancholy. So I really hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.